Simon, you have a bit of a success story when it comes to a sealed bid buy, and I would like for you to share that with people because I think it's quite cool. Okay, I will. Before I started working at Holtz again, I worked for Holtz 24 years ago, left to do other things, and then started getting into competition clay shooting and was looking to find a cyber side that I could shoot clays regularly with because I prefer shooting cyber sides. Actually, the way my eyes work, I actually like the fact that my left muscle of my thumb and the left barrel block out my left eye because in certain situations my left eye has a tendency to want to start playing the game and I really don't want it to because I'm a right-handed shooter. Uh, so I've always been on the lookout for the right kind of gun and six years ago I found one in the sealed bid and managed to pick it up and I didn't pay a lot of money for it and really that is the lesson of the sealed bid is you don't have to spend big money to get something that's very functional, very usable and can win you a little pot. So I bought a W.J. Jeffrey, which is a really well-respected maker. He uh, very well respected for his rifles, but also made very, very good quality mm -hmm. um, side locks as well. This is a gun that appears in his 1906-1907 catalog, which I've got a copy here, as his long-range pigeon gun. They marketed it as a pigeon gun. Long-range pigeon gun. And it's 30-inch barrels. It was tight choked. This has actually been sleeved. And for those who don't know, sleeving is when you take off the old barrels that are worn out and you machine back and put new tubes on and relay a rib, which gives it a little bit more heft up in the barrels. So it's, it, it's quite a deliberate gun to point and mm -hmm. quite a deliberate, deliberate gun to shoot. I like that for clay shooting because it's a totally different exercise to game shooting. In my opinion, I shoot game and clays very, very differently. It's a much more deliberate and controlled movement and a heavier weight barrel for me promotes that kind of deliberate controlled movement. Anyway, so I picked it up for 325 quid plus commission and have shot clays with it ever since and just thoroughly enjoy shooting clays with it. And I was lucky enough at the English Open this year to get myself into a shoot off and win the Cyber Side Championship at the English Open. So with a 325 with a 325 pound plus commission 120 gun. 120 year old gun. Yeah. It's actually the number two grade of Jeffrey's long range guns. They marketed it in two grades. The higher grade, number one grade, had much more engraving on it and it was a very good looking gun. I'd love to find one of those one day. But this is the number two grade marketed as a planar action, less engraving. All other particulars remain the same is how they, how they put it. Um, it's a three inch chambered gun. It's choked five eighths and seven eighths. It's damn near full in the left barrel. So when you connect, you connect. There is no doubt. There's no chipping of stuff. That's a good <laughs> confidence boost, right? It is, yeah. yeah. And for those who haven't shot in an open or one of the bigger competitions, the targets that sort out the prizes and sort out the podium spots are the long ones. Yes. Um, you have to put in the, you have to get as many of the uh, average targets yeah. Take, take scores take on your cards. Take the tens if you can. Um, but when you've got a 60 yard looper coming off high off a bank, that one is going to work out who is and who isn't at the end. Yes. And a cyber side is generally not people's choice for no. that. However, that gun. Does, but this gun is built for exactly that target. Does feel good. Yeah, it, it does. Feels like a clay gun. You've picked it up, you've shot it. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean. It doesn't feel like most side by side. It's, it's difficult, isn't it? Because you, we always say cyber size this over and under that, but that's actually complete and utter manure because. You get an over and under that handles so fast, so whippy, has all of the characteristics that are more cyber side. Yeah, if you put a big four in on it and told people it was an over and under sighting plane, everything about it moves yeah. very similarly. It is over and under like in many respects, but it's still a classic English hammer gun. Yes, it's uh, it does good quality. Look exceptional as well. And it's got nice lines, it's got a nice pistol grip. The stock is nice and lean through it. It's not fat in the comb. I had the, sh the extension that to fit me because, you know, we're taller than the people of 1910, 1906. Mm. Um, we have McDonald's. Uh, we do, but we also, we're wearing performance materials now. We're not wearing thick wool coats. Yeah. We're wearing Gore-Tex coats, which are much, much thinner. So almost everything needs an extension on. Um, and I had the stock extension particularly shaped because I like a nice defined pitch on the back of my stock to fit my particular broken collarbone in here <laughs> um, is where it likes to, I, I have a feel and I, ex I communicated that to uh, Simon, who did the extension for me, and he did exactly what I wanted. It's not in the best of health. It's been rejointed twice because I have thrashed it. Wow. I've had the rib relayed by Dixon's uh, up in Scotland, who very kindly did that for me, um, without complaining about the state of my gun, um, because it's an old gun. Things go wrong with old guns. But so it's... You've invested quite a lot more than your 325 to begin with. We've discussed previously you have to be happy with concessions. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, it's, it's like paying for a service for a, for a classic car. You're going to do it yeah. because you want it to keep going. 
It's not, oh, it's broken, chuck it. Not for me. Not that, well, it never has been for me. This is always the gun I go back to. It's too tight for game shooting, um, for most game shooting, uh, but it suits me for clays. It's a really cool gun. I'm very proud of you for your achievement with Thank it this you. year. Yeah, it's, it was good fun to it's do. It's pretty cool. It was, an, it was a, an interesting and a very odd experience getting to, I've never been in a shoot off before. Driving back to the two, because it's a four day competition, because there's 16, 13, 1500 people that go through the competition. Driving back on the Sunday for the shoot offs was an interesting mental battle with myself because there's always that temptation to go, oh, I missed that easy one on a stand eight, that last target. And I, I just switched off the concentration and dropped the straightforward target. And if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't be in a shoot off. I would have run it out right. But then you have to check yourself and not go down that mentality. Uh, you have to then say, well, it's a privilege to be in a shoot-off. No one else is in a shoot-off. You've earned your spot here. You now have to do what needs to be done. This is your chance now. Yeah. Um, and I was shooting you... off against a very nice chap called Francis Alexander, who's an outstanding side-by-side -side shot. Uh, and we had a little bit of um, friendly banter beforehand because he was shooting a Beretta Para 486 with a fantastic gun extended teak choke sticking out the end of it and he said i'm really sorry but my gun's got sticky out chokes and i said well i'm really sorry but my gun's got sticky out hammers so we'll probably be all right together won't we um and we were shooting the same shoot off target that phil gray and P um, phil thorold and uh james adcock they were all shooting as well I, so it does seem a little unfair but having seen you with that there's no disadvantage no you yeah. it's there you've got to be killed it's got to be killed yeah. so you just get on with it a modern cartridge will do what modern cartridge does does it care what gun absolutely it's Right. Absolutely. I have to say, I do prefer shooting lighter loads through it. I tend not to shoot 28 gram loads. I'll shoot a 26 gram load. I was shooting a 26 gram load that day, and Stuart Smith, the owner of the ground, came up to me and went, you killed that first pair beautifully. What cartridges were you using? And I went, 26 gram eights. And he went, really? <laughs> yeah, you don't need a big punchy load. It is funny. I we moved from 32s to 28s. The Olympic guys are on 24s. Exactly. And I often shoot a 24 through this, because yeah. I love it. It's so soft, so smooth. And when you shoot 200 targets, you want a 24 gram load of good quality because that there is a recoil factor with a cyber side. Mm. And what you, does it weigh? It weighs seven pound four. That's about a pound and a half to two pounds lighter than some of your other competition yes, guns out there. It is. You just adjust and aim off those factors. There's no drawback shooting a light load. No. There really isn't. Um, and actually, that was brought home to me by the guy who recommended the 24 gram load to me. He said, if it's good enough for me at Olympic Trap and the second barrel boy, it's good enough for you. <laughs> and he was right. It's a very good way of putting it. Yeah. This is it. I think there's a confidence boost to an ounce load occasionally. Occasionally. And there's certain targets that I do like to put bigger, faster shells in. Yeah. It make, I mean, I know it makes a difference, but I think a lot of it is up there, isn't it? It is. It's all mental. Yeah. Um, you can get anybody to a 75%, 75 out of 100. Most people will get there. Yeah. The next 25% is all fought and won and lost in the small real estate that is the grey bits between your ears. Yes. That's it. I think that's a really cool little sealed bid success story. Most of the things I buy from the seal bid end up being shot twice and then I go and look <laughs> at them occasionally. It's nice to see something actually being taken out, used, loved, used so much it needed rejointing twice. That's... Yeah, that's but it's a shooting. big strong gun and it'll take it. It just, you occasionally you'll have to put a new cross pin in because it's the gun I shoot best with. And we left it out of the, the film we did previously with about my guns in the cabinet. This one did not appear because it was away being rejointed at the time. <laughs> So, yeah, but there you go. It's one of those things you can just have a lot of fun in the seal bid, pick up something like that, go and shoot to a reasonable standard with it. Quite a good standard. Well, you know, practice makes perfect. And the side-by-side -side thing is, it's a very interesting niche as a competition thing. I think that's cool as well. Yeah, I just wish there were more people who, who I, I wish there were more of the major competitions that have a cyber side category and very few of them do sadly and i think if the category was there more people would turn up i think the cyber side deserves more of a place in in modern clay shooting awesome thank you sam pleasure always thank you for watching guys this channel is made possible by our amazing sponsors you can find out more about them in the description down below and if you want to support the channel you can join as a member you get loads of extra content well some extra content and occasionally we hook up and go clay shooting together as a membership group if you don't feel like joining today we really appreciate you watching and subscribing have a wonderful day